The new year is not starting off on a happy note for workers at some of the country's largest tech companies with more layoffs just announced. ABC's Alexis Christophers. And you know, having massive offices in America's most expensive city probably isn't helping things. Google cutting hundreds of jobs in its engineering product and hardware divisions. This week alone, about a dozen major companies announced job cuts, including Amazon and Google's parent Alphabet. There is now over 100 million square feet of empty office space or leasable space in Manhattan. That is equal to 40 Empire State Buildings of vacant space now. The big tech companies announcing they will be eliminating more than 50,000 jobs worldwide. Some of those companies hired 50 and 75,000 people in the last two years. So companies are laying people off all over the country, not just in New York. And some of these companies have expensive offices here in New York that they're either closing or leaving altogether. And companies like Google that are staying, they're not making any big moves right now, that's for sure. But they're not expanding, and the fact that companies like this are letting people go, and some of them are downsizing, that's bad news not just for the country, but especially for New York. Even though New York City might actually be part of the problem. Facebook is leasing over a million square feet of space in Midtown, that's the old post office and they're in there right now but it's costing them a lot of money and in order to understand what these layoffs mean for new york city it's first important to understand that new york is probably the worst place you can have an office because this is the most expensive office space in the whole country and in a world of remote work it doesn't make sense to have a massive office where people can work from their company issued laptop which is why right now the city has almost a hundred million square feet of empty office space and you'd think landlords with office space would lower their prices but for some reason that's not what's happening and even as office vacancies pile up and companies downsize and move out, the city seems perfectly content with just allowing this to happen. But why? Here's a great example of how expensive office space is. Look, you got this gorgeous, brand new office over here, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work going on inside. But look, right next to it, there's a little section of commercial space that has been boxed off and walled off. This little box right here could have been part of their store, but they didn't want it. Look, you can see the little fake wall back there. And literally on the other side of this divider is their space. But before we get into why New York City loves having empty office space that nobody can afford to rent, it's important to understand that tech companies going through a layoff procedure. That's not just because of a tough economy that's leading to empty storefronts. Even in New York City's pricey, exclusive Chelsea market. In fact, many experts say that the tech layoffs we're witnessing were gonna happen no matter what. And that's because of every employee's favorite word, productivity. Economic experts say big tech is now reducing its workforce that became inflated and now they have to cut back. So whether or not this was planned or gonna happen naturally anyways, it's going to have a big effect on New York City. But to understand and why. You've got to realize that in 2020, these tech companies went on a massive hiring spree, which makes sense. The world started using tech more than ever that year. And at the time, there was very low inflation, which allowed companies to spend more money on speculative hiring. But here we are a few years later, and as it turns out, tech companies overhired by a lot, completely overestimating the number of people they were actually going to need to hold on to as the world went through some changes, which is why they're now downsizing, slimming down, and closing offices they built up here in New York City. In fact, Mark Zuckerberg called last year the year of efficiency, which I guess is a nice way of saying that they let a lot of people go. And the reason companies achieve productivity when they lay people off is because now the same amount of work has to get done by fewer people. And since employees love extra work and seeing their colleagues get fired, articles like this really shouldn't be surprising. But there's actually one massive driver of productivity that nobody saw coming. Artificial stupidity. I mean, artificial intelligence, artificial stupidity. I think we already have that one. But from the middle of last year up until about now, AI has allowed companies to be way more productive and let larger and larger amounts of people go. And guess who companies are blaming for these recent layoffs? They're saying the computer made us do it. But contrary to what most of us think about AI, it can do way more than write college entrance essays, break up texts, or inspirational quotes you then post to LinkedIn. Google, Microsoft, these guys are already using AI to do all kinds of stuff. Search, image generation, text generation. And if AI can write, it can also write code and improve things that we use every single day. Porcelain is what they make toilets out of. That's some bragging rights right there. And you know this little guy right here, Bing? Why is there so much empty office space in New York City? Look at that, it just gave me three paragraphs, and what's great about this is at the bottom, it has the sources that 
that it used to generate this answer so you can check it and see if it's intelligent or not. But it's pretty ironic when you think about the fact that big tech is leading the way with the AI charge, but AI is also going to replace a whole bunch of jobs in big tech, which is going to save them money on New York City office space that they don't need anymore and employees who they no longer have to pay, sadly. But there's more to the story of big tech shedding jobs specifically here in New York because every single company has some sort of presence here. But as they decrease their physical presence here, experts say more and more folks will realize that the city itself is the reason this is happening. Did you know that Twitter has a New York City headquarters? Which they aren't using. Actually, this would save them money because their actual office is in this building right here and they're closing it. And after they leave the city, they'll be joining the ranks of Kickstarter and Yelp who have done the exact same thing. And Twitter's also laying people off. And that's because Elon Musk said the company was losing $4 million a day, which meant that the job losses were totally unavoidable. Plus they've got problems with some of their legal filings here in the state. Meta, AKA Facebook, they're in a similar position. Government paperwork, making it tough for them. Maybe they should use AI to do the paperwork and then they wouldn't have such problems. But Meta actually has one of the most impressive offices anywhere in the city because it's next to, or inside rather, the old post office building, which is still technically a post office, but it's also a modernized train station. But their expansion and investment in this building started back in 2019. Through the glass roof, you can actually see some of the offices up there. They don't actually need all the space that they have access to. And since they drastically overbuilt, reducing their New York City office presence is a big cost saver for them. And two years ago, they actually decided to bail on some office space they'd leased nearby this new headquarters. And believe it or not, they're actually trying to sublease some of the office space they can't weasel out of. Subleasing is when you lease a space that you've leased to somebody else, even though you're not the landlord. But Facebook's not the only company that overestimated how much they needed. Amazon's in a similar boat and their recent decision to proceed with layoffs. That also has to do with shifting business priorities. And as far as Google, things aren't much different on their end either. Cutting costs, letting people go, new priorities. I want to do new things. It's not you, it's me. And Microsoft is on a similar mission. They're citing future revenue growth as a problem. And they're also trying to get out of 42,000 square feet of office space they no longer need. But part of the reason this is bad for the city is that because when tech companies decide to do layoffs and when they decide to change what they're doing, companies that might have worked with them as maybe contractors or partners, they're then forced to go and do the exact same thing. So there's a big ripple effect when a big company makes a big move like this. Google doesn't make everything in-house. They need components. They need little parts here and there from different sub contractors, and some of these companies even outsource software projects that they don't feel like getting their hands dirty with. But in order to understand why companies leaving and downsizing and closing their offices could crush New York City financially and why the city doesn't really seem to care if that happens, we need to look at what companies' alternatives are if they don't want to rent a massive overpriced New York City office. Because it's also the reason why companies like Google and Amazon are hanging on and companies like Meta and Microsoft are shipping out. So if you don't want to rent an overpriced office, you can do what Amazon did and buy this entire office. On top of that, owning New York real estate counts as an investment. And this investment of Amazon's opened about eight months ago. This is the former Lord & Taylor building and it became a landmark back in 2007. Location's great right by the ESB. Look at how close this is right there. And it's two blocks from Bryant Park in the library right over here. And this beast of a building took years to renovate. That's probably Jeff's office right there. It's got 11 floors, 600,000 square feet, and 20 different elevators. You can still see the old Lord & Taylor logo way up there at the top because it used to be a department store and the building was built in 1924, so it's now 100 years old. But it's got some problems. And you see these lower level areas right here? These storefronts aren't being used. Think about it, this would be the window for some sort of commercial space. Door right here for people to get in. Here's another main style entrance right here on the corner. Look at that. All of those are closed except the main. And I'm pretty sure this is where people who work at Amazon can go in, which they don't do all that often. Also, there's a lot of vacant commercial space across the street, so we shouldn't be too hard on Amazon because I'm sure whatever's in here is gonna be nicer than the empty little building across the street as well. But did you know that Amazon paid $978 million for this back in 2020? And the 2,000 people who work here only show up three days a week. 
But on the plus side, they're saving money on rent. But on the negative, if New York's no longer a good fit, they can't leave. At least not as easily as a company that's leasing rather than owning. And that's a pretty much every other company that's cutting jobs is doing. Not only are they cutting jobs, but they're also cutting their office space. Amazon can't do that, which means they aren't contributing to what many people are calling New York City's commercial real estate catastrophe, which some people think could tank the city. Things were getting better for a little while, or at least they look like they might, but that sort of fizzled out after, after September. There is now over 100 million square feet of empty office space or leasable space in Manhattan. So New York City is littered with vacant office space. This is vacant space right here. And according to the New York Times, the number is 100 million empty square feet. That's crazy. And New York City's office-related downfall started back in 2020. And by the end of 2023, 17% of all office space in the city was for lease. And here's why this could end up spelling absolute doom for New York City. All of these buildings are how New York City makes money. And the more these buildings are worth, the more money the city can get from the owners of these buildings by way of property taxes. But as office buildings go out of style and their value starts to drop, the city starts making less money. And that's because with all these empty spaces, nobody's using these buildings the way that they used to. And since nobody wants to use them, their value's a lot lower. Think about it, all this space is just sitting here empty. Nobody wants anything to do with it right now. Now, at some point that may change, but if it doesn't, experts are predicting the city could lose billions of dollars in tax revenue, and that's bad for two reasons. The first reason it's bad is because obviously the city now has less money to run itself. And the second reason that it's bad is because if the city tries to fix this problem, it's only gonna create more problems for itself that it can't fix. If the city's taking in less in property taxes because office values generate less money for them, the city could cut its spending on things like fire, police, road maintenance, but then the quality of life here in New York is gonna go down, people might move, and then there might be less people to go to these offices. And the other thing the city could do would be to raise taxes, but then people and businesses are going to leave as well. And that's basically like a massive catch-22 that the city's stuck between. The office market is in free fall, and there's really no way to correct that. At least, not without angering the people that live here that you need to use those same offices. In fact, many residents say that they feel the streets are more dangerous. Trash and litter is definitely starting to pile up as the city continues cutting its budget. As it deals with a whole bunch of crises simultaneously. But the last thing the city wants is for the value of office space to drop. And believe it or not, landlords don't want that to happen either because if that happens who are they going to sell their building to also it's been four years since 2020 and these big offices they'll wait 10 15 years in order to get somebody in there who signs a 20 or 30 year lease and that's because unlike apartment leases which are one to three years per tenant banks local gift shops restaurants they stick around for a long time but it might end up that trying to keep office values high artificially ends up devaluing them in the long run got remote work and that's part of the reason but now now, only about half of Manhattan's office workers are back in the office. That's basically unchanged since September. Ah, work from home. The single reason that companies may not be able to wait forever to see if they can get a big tenant who comes in and rents 10, 20, 30,000 square feet. It's probably never gonna happen. It may never happen. Or at least if it does happen, it won't be the same types of companies that were renting it before. And even companies like Amazon with their big, beautiful office that they're not walking away from, they're only in there three days a week. And before work from home became the name of the game, that was something that only upper level executives could do with their laptop. You had to go in and sit at your desk. And that's part of the reason why a lot of companies are also canceling planned expansions. Renting bigger spaces in a climate like this definitely doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And let's face it, these empty offices that you might be interested in, they'll still be here if you ever change your mind. But the real issue for New York could be that as worker productivity goes up because of things like AI and technological advancement, these offices drop even further because now there's even less of a need for them. Got a little company in here, but all of these lower floor suites are empty. Same thing in the building next door. Lights are on, but nobody's home. But believe it or not, there are some companies that are actually expanding. DoorDash, the delivery service company, they just signed 115,000 square feet of space. They're blowing up right now. And that's proof that as the things people want change, the need for an office might also change based on which industries are growing and which industries are contracting. Plus, DoorDash is also kind of like a tech company because they're using an app to provide a service that's traditionally been provided without one. But AI isn't yet going to replace the actual person that brings the package to your door, at least not this year. And believe it or not, there are some bright spots on the horizon for New York City's office market.
So believe it or not, although vanishing tech jobs and AI and all this stuff could be a potential risk, New York City is a big place and it's not dominated by a single industry like say San Francisco, which is pretty much all tech. In New York, you've got everything. You got law firms, you got investment banks, you got insurance, you've got big salad, which basically means that other industries are probably gonna fill in the cracks that are left behind by companies that decide to decrease their office space like Facebook, for example. Who those companies are, what exactly it is they do, we don't necessarily know the answer to that yet, but recently insurance companies and law firms have signed massive leases here in the city. In fact, a law firm this past year signed a lease for 760,000 square feet. That's a lot of lawsuits. Great business if you're in America. And what this essentially means is that New York City's diverse economy from a wide range of industries, that's going to be the thing that bails it out of this office market glut. And now the big question is, will big tech and empty offices hurt the city? Has it already hurt the city? Is the city recovering? Let me know what you think. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.